Hi guys, and welcome back to our FIFA 22 Sunderland Road to Glory career mode. So, in this episode, it is an absolutely massive one because we take our first steps back to the Premier League with Sunderland. But, first and foremost, we have the little, the little situation that is the transfer window. So, of course, I've left it a few days so you guys can all get your suggestions in. And let me tell you, this has been so, so hard for me to make a decision on what to do because, of course, I need to try and please everyone. Uh, of course, some players, sorry, some people would like me to get some sort of like experienced players. Some people like me to bring in, just, you know, keep bringing in youth. Some people like me to dabble in the free agents. So I've wrote my list down, as I usually do. I've got a list of players I'm going to go for and uh, I have an idea of players that I might, you know, sell or put out on loan. But I think at the end of this, I'm going to end up maybe signing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players, potentially, even though in the last episode, I literally said I only want to get two or three. But, you know, a lot of you guys do suggest the free agent list. Some of them would have been way too unrealistic. You might think that some of the ones I'm going to get anyway are unrealistic, but believe me, it could be a lot worse. There's some players on the transfer list now, or sorry, on the free agent list that would have absolutely dominated the squad. There's, there's some players out there that are literally like sort of nearly late 80s that I could easily just snap up, but I'm not even going to mention the names because, <laughs> because you guys might persuade me to get them, but I just think it'd be far too unrealistic. But... Let's head into our first task. And the first task that I noticed that you guys had mentioned was the centre-back situation. Because if you look, we do currently have Doyle and Sanderson. Now, don't get me wrong, those two are very good defenders. I like them both. They're both very young. And by the end of this season, they're both going to be sort of rated late 70s, which is perfectly good, decent Premier League defenders. But what I am going to do, I'm going to sign one centre-back, and I'm actually going to be paying for him. He's not going to be a free agent. There's one centre-back I have in mind who's going to be sort of like late 70s. And then there's another one who I'm going to get on a free agent who's going to be about 70 rated, a young lad. Because, of course, if you have a look at our second string squad, you've got the likes of, you know, Neil in there, Willis, Flanagan. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to sell Neil. I'm not going to sell Neil at all. But I do think I'm going to send him out on loan. But as backup centre-backs, and we have so many games this season, Willis and Flanagan simply aren't good enough. So Willis and Flanagan, firstly, are going to go onto the transfer list. There we go. So Flanagan and Willis are both going to be going onto the transfer list. So let's go and replace them. And it's this man here. We've spoke about it over the last couple of series, and I nearly did it. We have had the return of Captain Twanzaby before, but we didn't do it last year. We're going to do it this year. Axel Twanzaby was the first captain we had in our FIFA Road to Glory series all those years ago. And he became an absolute legend on this channel. And it was suggested in the last episode to bring him back again. And I just thought, why not? Perfect timing. He's going to be rated late 70s. It's just an ideal signing. It really, really is. Great play. He's only 25 as well. He's not too young. He's not too old. He's in his prime. He's quick. He's strong. It's just ideal. And he's going to be getting that captain's armband straight away. So let's have a chat with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Come on, lad. Come on, lad. 8.3. Will he do 8.3 for me? He's happy with 8.3, which is actually less, a little bit less than what I have written down on my sacred list. He wants a crucial squad role, which is absolutely fine. That's perfect. A four-year deal. I'll change that to a five just because I want him here for as long as humanly possible. We'll disregard the release clause. Now, again, I've done a little bit of digging, a little bit of looking up as to what wages he would want, because I'm trying to get a lot of my transfer business done on day one. So that's why I haven't been waiting for scout reports to come through. And apparently, they'll be looking but sorry, I'll be looking between 45k and 55k. I'll try about 47. See what he says to that. 47k, 51k he wants was so pretty close. Remove the bonus. He's probably gonna want to add a little bit more. He has done. 54k. I'll change that to 52 just to be. Cheeky. Let's see what he says to that. It's happy with that. 52k and our first signing of our transfer window back in the Premier League is none other than Captain Twanzaby. 77 rated Captain Twanzaby. Now I think that's a fantastic start to this transfer window and a great suggestion as well. I love bringing back previous area, sorry, previous heroes of series and uh, Captain Twanzaby is just that. And Twanzaby for the time being will slip in there ahead of Sanderson and Sanderson will drop two the second string squad, and we'll take uh, we'll take Flanagan out, put Sanderson there, and now of course we're going to go get another centre back who was a free agent, a young lad, and he goes by the name of Bissek, and it's this lad here. As you can see, 22 years of age. I think he will be rated about 70, which isn't too much of an improvement. But if you look at this lad, he is six foot five, and you guys know if you know me well, 
You guys know that I love my big centre back, you know, big beast at six foot four, six five, and he's just an absolute brick shit out. So if you have a look, he'll have a bit of pace about him and his strength between 79 and 89. He'll just be able to do a job, you know, when we do need to, you know, chop and change and rotate the squad. So we're gonna try and go for Jan Orel Bisek, the German six foot five machine. He wants 15.5k. I'll just accept that. I think that's a really, really fair deal. So that is our second signing of the transfer window so far. We've got Captain Twanzerby and Jan Orel Bissek. Again, it's a bit of an underwhelming one, I know, but uh, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, as the transfer window goes on, you'll see how the squad is shaping up and you'll see what I'm doing here. I just want some really good cover behind our main centre-backs. So there we go. Bissek slips straight into the centre-back position in our second string squad. So there's more 70-rated players in there because we can't be doing with, you know, 60-odd-rated players in the Premier League, even if it is just our second string squad. But now we are going to be going for a striker and I absolutely loved this suggestion because Colin Grant of West Brom, he was an absolute nightmare for us in the Championship. He scored every time we played against him, so I thought that is really realistic. We're not grabbing a player who's already amazing in the Premier League or a top striker who's a free agent who's really high rated. This is someone who's been an absolute nightmare for us every time we've played him. So, we're going to go for Colin Grant. He's got a player face. I think he's, you know, he's only 25, can play left mid as well as a striker. And I think he'll probably be able to do his job in the Premier League. He's got experience there before. So, let's go for him. Oh, he wants a lot of money here. 12.2 million. Uh, we'll try 10.2. Will, will that uh, annoy him? Oh, he's happy with it. 10.2 million. Okay, I'll take that. That's uh, considerably less. Or considerably lesser than the the digits I've got down here, than the figures I've written down on my list. So let's see what he wants in terms of his contract. If you guys are excited for this episode, by the way, hit that like button for me. It's always massively, massively appreciated. I usually wait to say all that kind of stuff at the end of the episode. But uh, if you guys are enjoying the series and you're regularly viewing it, please hit like button for me. It just shows that you are enjoying it. And uh, it makes me want to keep making him. <laughs> he wants a crucial squad roll, which is fine. He's going to be rated sort of late 70s, isn't he? Probably about 76, 77 maybe. Uh, I'll give him a four-year deal. I think that's probably fair. And he wants 43k. That's absolutely fine. We'll do that then. 43k a week. And we have signed a top striker. One of the best strikers in the championship. This is why I love the realism of this, uh, this signing. We're bringing him up to the Premier League and giving him a chance with us at the stage of my life. Colin Grant. Welcome to the club, son. There he is, 76 rated. His pacey is strong, and we know we can finish. We've seen it in the championship, but can we get him firing in the Premier League? And there is Grant sitting alongside Stewart. Now, the thing is, that looks so good to me. That looks so, so good. And the thought of Stewart up top alongside Grant, you know, Stewart's winning balls in the air, flicking them on for Grant, who can get him behind. I've actually got my eyes on another striker, which is going to make things very, very difficult, considering we already have like four strikers on the books. Of course, now we have Grant, we have Stewart, we have uh, Scarlett, we have Lowe who can play the striker, we have Greenwood there as well. But there is another option that you guys have suggested that I really, really want to go for, which is going to make things a bit of a nightmare, because to have, you know, four or five strikers on the books is ridiculous, and all of them being decent as well. But uh, I think I might just have to go for it. And you might think this is overdoing it, and I'm, I know I am overdoing it here. I'm absolutely overdoing it. But I'm just excited at the thought of it. So uh, bear with me. Can you guys remember <laughs> a little man named Josh Madger? Now, this man, I know, it's a controversial one. It's a controversial one. I absolutely loved him when he played for Sunderland in League One. Then, of course, he got offered big bucks to go elsewhere. He went over to France. He's done bits uh, with Fulham in the Premier League as well. So it does kind of make sense, you know, to try and get him back. And, you know, you know we weren't necessarily that he didn't enjoy playing for the club. He was a young kid when he played for us. And he ended up getting tempted away. Big money. He ended up doing really well in France. He's gone to the Premier League. He's done bits there. So is this the homecoming that he desires? Uh, we shall see. 10 million, mate. Come on. 10 million. Take 10 million. He'll take it. 10 million for Josh Madger. Now, you're all probably screaming at the screen now saying, why the hell have you brought in another striker? But, you know, Josh Madger, Colin Grant, you've got Ross Stewart, Scarlett as well. I just think it just makes such a good array of strikers for us to use. You know, when sometimes things get a bit stale, when you're using one kind of striker, to change it up with this amount of quality, I just can't really turn it down. And it was a suggestion from you guys as well. So I can't ignore suggestions like this. I really, really like the thought of bringing Josh Madger back to the stage of my life and in the Premier League. But will he take it? 40k, he wants 40k. All right, that's fine. 40k and Josh Madger 
has returned to the Stadium of Light. And there he is. It's another 76-rated striker, Colin Grant and Josh Madger. Do you know what? I was saying before how excited I would be to see, you know, Ross Stewart play alongside Colin Grant. But now the thought of Grant playing alongside Madger is exciting me even more. It really is. I think that is such a good combination there. Both quick and strong and they can definitely score. But can they do it in the Premier League? That's what we keep saying. That's the big question. Grant and Madger up top. That is mad. That is absolutely mad. I mean, look at that. That looks absolutely filthy. It really does look absolutely filthy, that. But now we do have a couple of free agents to bring in. And let me tell you, these are absolute star signings. One of them, I think, is... Well, both of them, you, to be fair, you could argue, are relatively unrealistic. But I really wanted proper star Premier League quality. And in these free agents, I think we're going to get just that. And don't get me wrong, as I mentioned earlier... There are some ridiculous free agents on the market that I have chose not to go for because it, it'd just be far too unrealistic. But a couple of these, I'm just going to bite the bullet and go for it. So as you can see, there's quite a few free agents here. There's quite a few. Uh, you've got Chardry there, that'd be a decent one. You've got Caballos, Castellejo. You've got Ibembe, former PSG player. Elianusi, former Southampton player. You've got uh, Gavi up there as well. Uh, Barcelona, youth products. But the two that I'm looking at right now are these two here, Caballos and Castellejo. Castellejo, you know, is getting on now, 28 years of age. I think it'll be a decent one. A big star signing for us in the Premier League. Caballos, you might argue that's, of course, very, very unrealistic. But, you know, he's not had any game time. That's why he's a free agent. You know, he hasn't done brilliantly well at Arsenal. So to bring him here to the stage of a light, he could be our big star signing in the middle of the park. And you've got Castellejo on the wings. You've got Diaco on the other wing. I think that is really starting to mould a decent Premier League side. And that's what we try to do because at the minute when you look at it and you guys have really made me realise uh, how much we have to strengthen this squad. We really, really have to. So firstly, I'm going to go for Danny Caballos. He should be rated about 79 or 80 anyway, which, you know, it's not too crazy because we've already got Diaku who's rated 80 as well. So it's not that I'm bringing in an 87 rated player, if that makes sense. I'll give him a three-year deal. See if he's okay with that. He is okay with that. He'll have a massive wage, I'm sure. Oh, it's not actually as big as I thought. I'll remove the bonus, submit the offer. He'll probably increase the wage he has done to 51k. And there we go. Danny Caballos, the Spaniard, the little Spaniard in the middle, is going to be dictating the play for Sunderland in the Premier League this season. What a signing. And there he is, yes. He can play as a central midfielder or a CDM as well. 80 rated Danny Caballos. I'm really, really happy with the business we've done so far. But we're going to go straight back to the free agent list to try and get Castellejo. And here he is. He wants a crucial squad role. Of course, that's absolutely fine. And it's great as well because he does have a player face. Trying to bring in this Premier League quality. Also, by the way, guys, I actually did a test run because we're going to be going up to ultimate difficulty this season. And I got absolutely battered. I did a little test run earlier and I lost considerably. So, uh... This is why I'm really scared and I'm really conscious that we need to upgrade our side considerably. Once 46k a week, we will accept that. And there we go. Castellejo and Danny Caballos have both joined the Black Cats at their stage of light. 77 rated Castellejo as well. So Castellejo on one side. You've got uh, Diaco on the other. You've got Caballos in the middle. I think uh, we're starting to really form a great little side here. I mean, look at that side with Hoffman, Sirkin, Doyle, Twanzaby, Huggins... Castellejo, Mumba, Caballos, Dayaku. You've got Grant and Madra up top. There's just loads to choose from there. And it's going to be so difficult in the middle of the park as well now. So, of course, you've got Caballos, you've got Mumba, we've got Luke Nayin, We have uh, Onyedika, who's one of my favourite players for us at the moment. So, that's going to be a nightmare to try and leave him out or try and involve him as much as humanly possible. Dan Neal, who I'm going to put out on loan. But I have made the decision to put Luke Nayin on the transfer list. Again, it's another one of those players that I just think, you know, with Onyedika, he's, he's relatively young. He's, uh, he's only 22, so he's going to improve, whereas Luke O'Neill, I know he's been with us from the beginning, his captain does from the beginning as well, but, you know, he's 28, he's not that great, he didn't feature as much last season, even in the championship, so he's 72, he's not going to improve too much more, I think he might end up going up to 73, maybe 74, an absolute push, so for me, because he's in the second string squad now as well, if we get a bit of money back off him, and then bring another younger player in, and stick him in the second string squad, and uh, I think that would be quite nice. I think that would be quite nice. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think we go back to the free agent list and uh, pick up Gavi. Yeah, so we have Pablo Gavi here now, who's pretty much going to be 
Uh, filling in for Luke O'Neill, who I'm going to put on the transfer list. He's only 18 years of age. And as I say, he, he's got such high potential. He just happens to be on the, the free agent list. We'll give him a five-year deal. He'll be going into that second-string squad, but he will improve massively. And he will get a lot of game time, or plenty of game time, or enough game time, because there's so many games to get through, of course, with the League Cup, the FA Cup, and the Premier League as well. And there is confirmation that Pablo Gabi has signed for Sunderland. 18 years of age, 71 rated, absolute class. He's only a rating below Luke O'Neill, and he's 10 years younger than him. So it just shows the massive amount of potential that you can find in the free agent list. I mean, look at that. Look how good this looks. Look, that's our first string squad. There's our second string squad. They're both just so, so decent. Of course, the second string squad is pretty much a good or high-end uh, championship side, whereas that there, for me, it's still a sort of okay Premier League side, maybe. So uh, we'll have to see anyway. But as of right now, we don't have that much money left. We only have 3.82 million. There's one more player I do have on my mind. And for that, or for, the, for this uh, transfer to take place, I'm thinking of, we we'll probably have to get rid of a winger. Um, Gooch is going to go, because that's been suggested by you guys. Out of both Lowe and Dembele, even though Dembele is younger than Lowe and is rated higher, I actually prefer Lowe. So I want to keep Lowe. I think I might sell Dembele to bring in another winger who is actually, I think, uh, rated very, very similarly, if not the same. But you guys have raved about him. And it's a lad named Coleman. Not Kingsley Coleman. Florinal Coleman. Uh, a left winger, can play striker as well, 25 years of age. Like I say, I believe he might be the same rating as Dembele, but... Quite a few of you guys have actually suggested him in the past, uh, not just in the last episode, or on Instagram or social media and stuff like that. So apparently this guy is special. So uh, I think it'd be quite nice to put him on the wing as well and have low on the other side for our second string squad. Um, so it's just it's just changing things up a little bit, isn't it? And just improving the quality on what we already have in terms of, you know, we have Gooch in there. So if we get rid of Gooch, bring in Coleman. Uh, it's, it's just really just improving the squad. But we'll have to wait until we have a bit more money to try and pull that one off. Something I've just managed to do, actually, just off camera there as well. I've just given new deals to Scarlett, to Stewart, and to Greenwood. And they've actually all agreed deals on the basis of them being a sporadic squad role. Not even rotation. So what's really good there is, even though I was getting worried and concerned that we have so many strikers... They're not going to be that bothered because their role is so low now. Which I can't believe they've actually accepted that role, but they have done. So uh, that's really, really good for us. But now, as usual, I'm going to be quick summing all of the preseason tournament because I just don't care for it whatsoever. Hopefully, we just don't pick up any injuries and we do pick up uh, a decent amount of money. But we'll quick sim this first game against Cadiz and we draw 0 0, which again isn't the worst thing in the world. We didn't pick up any injuries or knocks at all. And we do have a transfer offer for Luke 09. Just over 2 million, which I'll accept straight up. He's been brilliant for us. He really has. But I think it is his time to go. Now we have two loan offers. One for Bafalta and one for Scarlett. Now for Bafalta, I'll just um, I'll accept that. It's a one-year deal. Now for Scarlett, I don't really fancy getting rid of him if I'm being completely honest. Um, so I'm going to uh, reject that offer. If it was someone like Greenwood, then maybe, but I, I just really, really like Scarlett. I've just got a soft spot for him. Next up, we are going to be taking on a Lanya Sport, and we will use our second string squad for this one. We'll quick sum it. Come on, lads, can you do us a favour here? And we win by two goals to nil. It is that man, Scarlett, my little golden child, and Barker as well. Gets himself a goal. I say that I'm not asked about the preseason tournament yet. I'm celebrating like a madman. And there's confirmation that Buffounta has been loaned out. And there is also confirmation that Luke O9 has been sold. And there's a transfer offer for Jamal Lowe. And it's Newcastle. The Mags want Jamal Lowe. It's actually a very decent offer, to be fair. But I'm not selling anyone to those filthy, filthy scumbags. But now to take on final, which will be a decent test for our lads. I'm going to quick submit again with our first strength side. And we draw... One all. It isn't going too badly, actually. It really isn't. No injuries. We're not losing. Really nice. And now we do actually have a loan offer for Sam Greenwood. And I think it would actually do the world of good for him. Because they'll be playing regularly in a really decent level league as well for Real Sociedad. You guys might think I'm crazy for letting this happen. But uh, I just think it'd be good for him. I won't, I'm not going to let him go on the two-year deal. I'm probably going to delegate that. And I'll put it on a one-year deal. So it'd just be interesting to see how he does out there as well. So I'm going to accept that and hopefully that move does go ahead. And that is going to be confirmed. I'm going to accept it. A one-year loan deal for Sam Greenwood to go to Spain. 
What a lovely move that is for the 21 year old. But there is a transfer offer for Tom Flanagan that I'm just going to accept straight up. It's been great for us. He was fantastic in League One in particular. Bits and pieces in the Championship as well. But now I think it is a step too far, the Premier League for him. So I'm not going to stand in his way to get a move elsewhere. And we have an offer for Hoffman, which I'm not even going to entertain. And now for the semi finals of this preseason tournament, we're going to go full strength again. Can we get ourselves a nice little win? And we do get the win. And it is on penalties. 4 3 on pens, 1 all in the 90 minute game. But we are through to the final of the pre season tournament. Again, I don't care about it. I don't, I promise. <laughs> but now we do have an offer for Elliot Embleton. It is probably time to say goodbye to Elliot Embleton because we don't use cams anymore within our system. And when we do go to, you know, a sort of three in the middle, we do a flat three now because that's when we go in defensive against the better sides. We don't use a camera or a centre forward. We play two up top and he's definitely not going to get in on the wing because he can play as a winger as well. So I think it's probably about right and probably about the right time to say goodbye to Elliot Embleton and accept this 1.9 million offer from Bournemouth. It's a good move for him as well. Although we do have an offer here from uh, Spain again, but this time it is for Bolly Mumba and I am going to reject that one. And there's confirmation that Flanagan has been sold and Greenwood has been loaned out as well. But now we are going to be heading to the final of the preseason tournament and we just have to use our second string squad because the first team are tired. So uh, this might not go as well as we would like, but we do. We do. We lose. We, <laughs> we lose by three goals to one. But there he is, Scarlett. He did give us a little bit of hope in the ninth minute, but then we collapsed a little bit. And we lost by three goals to one, but that'll do. We got ourselves to the final. Not bad. And there is confirmation that Embo has been sold. But now I think we might just about have enough money to bring in Florin Ult Coleman. Again, like I said earlier, I think he might end up being the same rating as Dembele. But you guys have raved about him. So I just really want to give him a go. Even though he might not get into the first team, because of course we have uh, um, we have Diaku and we have Castellejo now. To bring him in even off the, off the bench, we might end up proving to be better than Diaku or, or Castellejo, but uh, to have Lowe and Coleman in the second string, I don't think that'd be a bad thing at all. So we are going to go for him. I'm going to listen to you guys. And he has a play face, which is nice. How about 9 million? How's that? 9 million. He still wants 12. 9.5 million. Will he take it? He said yes to it, but I just have a feeling now that we're not going to be able to afford the wages. We'll have to see. But that did not go the way I wanted it to go. No, there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to agree terms with Coleman unfortunately now we do have a loan offer for Dan Neal it is from Genk but I'm uh, going to get rid of that option to buy that's not happening at all uh, a loan deal a one-year loan deal that'd be a really good one for Dan Neal as well and there we are we will accept it they've accepted just a one-year deal they don't want the uh, the loan to buy anymore we'll accept that so Dan Neal will be going out on loan for the season but now we do have an offer for Sir Ricky Dembele eight million we could potentially get nine million I'm going to see if we can do that. I'll negotiate that. See if we can get 9 million for him. There we go. 8.5 million. Please, please go through and give us some money. And there is confirmation that Sir Ricky Dembele has been sold for 8.5 million and 6.5 will get allocated to our transfer budget, which means we can go back in for Coleman, bring him in, which will be, uh, which will be his replacement, which will be uh, Dembele's replacement. And then because we've sold Dembele, we should have a little bit of money left, which what I think I'm going to do is buy a new scout, if we have enough money anyway, we'll have to see. How about that? 10 million, accept it. And there we go, simple as you like, 10 million pounds for Coleman. Come on, 10 million pounds for what is essentially a backup winger, which now when I say it out loud, uh, feels a little bit ridiculous. He wants 35k a week, it's absolutely fine. And there we go, I think that will be our transfer business done. Coleman is finally through the door. Another winger through the door, that will do. And there he is, 76 rated. Florinal Coleman, he can play on the left or he can play as a striker as well. Like I say, you guys have raved about him, so he better be good now because I've gone through hell and back to get him. On his development plan as well, I am going to try and change him to be a right winger. And now with 10 million left in the bank, what we can do is go on our youth staff and we will get a new scout, which would be very nice. There we go, five star, five star. I know a couple of you guys have been suggesting regularly in the comments for me to keep on checking out on the, the youth side of things. And I'm doing it. It's just uh, this guy here is just bringing absolute shit. Literally, every single one has been rubbish. He hasn't brought back one decent youth player as of yet. But now we have this lad here, Alex Bergren uh, of Sweden. Five-star experience, five-star judgment. Let's send him out somewhere nice. We've been to the Netherlands. We've been to Uruguay. Should we just do Spain? Something like that. Or Germany. In fact, yeah, let's do Germany. 
We haven't done Germany. Yeah, we'll send him out to Germany for nine months and see what he can bring back. Now, just before we do go into the first game of the season, I have been adjusting uh, some player numbers. I've given Madger his old squad number of the number 20. Grant has got the number 14. Scarlett already had the number 10. And Stuart already had number 9. So I didn't want to mess those around too much. Castellejo has picked up the number 11 in place of Gooch, who is on the brink of getting a move elsewhere. So we've got a few new play numbers here and there. But before we do get into the first game of the season as well, of course... We need to do this. We need to stick it on Ultimate, which is something I'm absolutely bricking it about. So this is the team we're going to go with to start the season off. We're going to Elland Road, taking on Leeds. And we do have Hoffman in goal. We have Sirkin, Doyle, Twanzaby, Huggins, Deyaku, Caballos, Mumba and Castellejo in midfield with Grant and Madger up top. This could be a really, really special day. But look at this. Leeds United side. Look who they have in there. They have Graven Birch, former Ajax man. He's actually a lad that one of you guys did suggest... But unfortunately, he's worth £80 million, which is just, uh, it was never, ever going to happen in a million years. But this is our return to the Premier League. Let's get into it. And here we are. It is an extraordinary occasion. A mixed bag of players. Like I said in the last episode, I generally thought I was going to sign two or three really good players. But with the amount of suggestions that you guys give, and me trying to balance out what you guys want and don't want, I end up just signing a shitload of players. Well, you guys aren't too mad at me if you think I've gone overboard, which I know I have. But... Are we well equipped enough to compete in their Premier League? Look at that, Colin Grant and Josh Madger up top for us. This could be special, you know. This could be special. Oh, wait, the lads. And again, help him out, help him out. It is Circuit now. Help him try and find Grant. He turns. It's Madger. One more time, if he can find his man, he does find. Castellayu strikes it, and it's a save. First chance to us. It's a ball over the top, but surely he's offside there. Surely Bamford is offside. He's not. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go. He struck it. And it's a save from Hoffman. Chances at either end at the minute. Oh no, they hold on to the ball so well. They're out wide now. Don't let them cut inside. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Please, lads, please, lads have shot. Where's the ball, man? There we go, that's yours. Well in, Hoffman. Oh, they're really playing the ball around well here, you know. You can really feel the difference on ultimate. You just can't get the ball off them at all. And when you've got the ball as well, the press is just ridiculous as well. I've got what is he diving on the floor for there? I didn't even press dive. Get into him. Great challenge. Come on. I swear to God, I did not press a thing for Sirkin off the ball to frigging fling himself on the floor. Oh, fuck's sake. We were doing so well. I knew something was going to happen. I knew something was going to happen. If you look at them off the ball, what is he doing? I wasn't even controlling him. Oh, and they've scored. I hate goals like that. It's so shit. And there's the man grabbing Birch who gets it. We're a goal down. So infuriating when it's just bullshit like that. It's been such an even game as well. And then shit like that happens. And it just spoils it. Find your man. Find your man. He's onside, surely. He is. It's Castileo. Can he get the ball in? He can towards his man at the back post. Cleared away. Oh, no. There's a man in behind there. I can see him. Follow him. Follow him. Don't let him turn you. Don't let him turn you. Get it away. Get it away. Mumba, get it away. Thank God. Oh, it's a great chance for them. Get there first. Come on, Twanza B. And there we go. It's 2-0. We're getting battered. We're getting absolutely torched here. And it's James who gets in behind this time. Completely missed the ball there. They've done us. They've absolutely done us. It's too quick for Twanza B. 2-0 before half time. I expect it to be hard. But this is just daft. <laughs> this is daft. Spires now switches the play really neatly there towards Bali Mumba. Now, come on, we need support in the box. There's very little in it towards Josh Madger. And it's easily held by the keeper. Knock it on, knock it on. There we go. It is Madger. Help him, help him, help him. Send him, send him if you can. There we can. There we go. Get across goal if you can. Shoot, surely. Get in. It's 2 1. And it's Grant who gets a goal in his debut. Grab the ball, lad. He won't grab it. He's celebrating. He's too busy. But get in. We finally. Break the deadlock. Well, for us, anyway, we broke the deadlock. Nice play by Magic. Into Castellejo. He's driven it across goal. It's a lovely finish as well. First time from Carl and Grant. He's actually scuffed it a little bit. But perfectly into that bottom left-hand corner. And that gives us a chance now on the stroke of half-time. There goes the half-time whistle. Can we get back into this game? And the second half is underway. Can we get back into this one? Maybe get back in level terms. But Leeds have just looked so lethal going forward. Getting used to this difficulty is going to be something else for me, isn't it? James. 
Well played. And again, it's just playing one twos with us here. And it's another block. Get it away, lads. Come on, Mumba. It's too small there, isn't it? See what I mean? They're playing frigging one twos with us. Come on, get your head in it. Get your head in it. Get your head in it. Well played. That's yours, Grant. That's yours. Well in. And again, flick it on. Lovely stuff. And again, look at this. Look at the space we've got here. And it's Diaku now. Still Diaku. Can he pull it back? Surely. Pull it back. Oh, the simplest of passes. All he had to do was tap it to Madger and just give it straight to the Leeds man. Brilliant. Captain Twansby. Skipping away from his man. I can see movement there and it is Josh Madger. I can see. Got in there as well. Surely. Surely shoot, man. Oh, my God. I swear to God. What the fuck was that? He's missed the ball originally, then he swatted it with an open net against the post. Oh, God. I'm sure I actually got a comment as well not long ago saying they like watching these videos because I don't just scream and shout all the time and swear. But that's literally all this game has been. Utter infuriation. Well in, Huggins. Well played. Josh Madger holding it up. Help him, help him, help him. Knock it on. There we go, and it is Huggins. Get it across goal. Can he get there first? He can. Straight to the keeper. I tried to make subs quite some time ago, but the ball just hasn't gone out of play. We've got Gavi, Stewart and Coleman all waiting to come on. But they just keep hold of the ball for so friggin' long, there's nothing I could do. Oh, piss off, man. Get it away, get it away. Well in, Doyle. And again, and again, and again, man. Don't let him get the shot off. Don't let him get the shot off. Oh, shit. Here we go. It's a cracking save. From the half. That was an amazing save. Well played, Diaku there. Send your man over the top if you can. Oh, it's just a frigging hot football. I don't know why I've done that. Oh, he's got there first. It is Grant. Come on, his body's over the top. Surely, finish. It's in. It's Castellejo with a gorgeous strike that sends the Sunderland away fans into absolute Pandemonium, get in! Look at the scenes at Elendrone as Castileo, the new man has smashed us back on level terms. Get in! Look at that. Colin Grant didn't give up, he's digged it across goal. Look at that there. I didn't even mean to pass it to him either. I really didn't. I meant to give it to Josh Madger to just tap it in. But Castileo, it's an even, it's a more difficult strike. The keeper's done excellently there to get even a hand to it, but he couldn't keep it out of the back of the net. Get in. Now, finally, the subs that I tried to make 20 minutes ago are coming on now. Not that they'll get much of a touch, unfortunately. I don't think, anyway. Two minutes ago, it's 2-2. Two, two. two minutes at a time. And, again, we haven't seen the ball since the goal. Leeds just keep holding it for so long. And there we go. I'll take it. A point on the opening day of our Premier League return. I'll take that every day of the week, considering we're two goals down. So come back and how badly we played, or to be fair, how Leeds, how good Leeds were in the first half. I think we've done really well there. I'll take that opponent away from home in the Prem. Decent start. So this is how the league table looked at the end of the episode. Of course, it's only the one game, so I'm not going to go up and down and have a proper look around. But yes, two all on the opening game of the season at Elland Road. I think that's a, a crazy little game for us to start the Premier League season off with. But what do you guys think of the transfer business that we've done? Let me know in the comments down below. And please hit the like button if you have enjoyed, of course. And subscribe if you're new to the channel to become a fully-fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jamming. <laughs>